By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I'm very relaxed today because you are listening to the Duelist podcast series. And what I will be doing in these series here on Timmy Talks is I will be reading some of my favorite articles from the Duelist magazines. And for the people that don't know what the Duelist is, and I imagine a lot of you do know what it is, especially when you're playing old school, the Duelist was a magazine, yes, a paper magazine. They still existed back in the day. It published by Wizards of the Coast, and it ran from 1994 to September 1999, and it had a total of 41 issues and it started out as a quarterly magazine but later switched to a bi-monthly magazine and then even to a monthly magazine and uh, obviously now in the digital era we don't see these magazines anymore i still think it would be nice for magic the gathering to have a magazine like this uh, but i guess financially it is not that interesting for these big corporations um, what I will be doing in today's episode, I will be reading the an article actually from the first uh, Duelist magazine. That is actually the second Duelist magazine. So this is officially the first uh, Duelist magazine, but there was a Duelist magazine before that that was given away as a promo at an event, but that is a whole different story. So for now, this is the first um, Duelist that was re released for the public. And the article that I'm going to read to you is called Circles of Protection, How to Use Them and How to Beat Them. And this article was written by Chris Page. Circles of Protection, How to Use Them, How to Beat Them. The basic concept behind Circle of Protection is simple. For each mana spent, a COP will prevent all damage to you from a single source of that color. Circles should not be confused with wards, which protect a given creature from damage inflicted by any source of a given color. While a ward does not require additional mana to be spent to counter multiple attacks, it only protects one of your creatures, and not you. Conversely, circles of protection only prevent damage to you. They won't stop your land from being destroyed or your creatures from being removed from play. Also, a single circle of protection can avert damage from multiple sources but only if you spend one mana per attacking source. A circle can defend against seven creatures as easily as one, as long as you spend seven mana. Additional lands must be spent to counter multiple attacks from the same source. Thus, if your opponent uses Pestilence three times for one point of damage each time during the same turn, you have to pay three mana to stop all the damage, though the attack comes from a single source. You can't rely on circles of protections for a complete defense. With a circle of protection, you may be temporarily invulnerable to damage of a certain color. But if all your creatures are dead, your offensive capabilities are limited. Moreover, circles require a significant reserve of mana to be effective. In order to avert damage, you have to have one free mana per opponent's attacking spell or creature. That's one less land you can use, which can significantly slow your development. You'll often be faced with a choice between casting a spell and taking damage when your opponent attacks, or saving uh, your mana for your circles, doing nothing while your opponent uses his or her mana freely to make the situation worse. Too much reliance on circles of protection can cripple you. However, with a mixture of creatures and circles of protection, you have a very good defense. Your creatures can bear the brunt of the attack, while your circle can be held in reserve for that one too many creature your opponent has, or the fireball or swamp walking creature you simply can't block. Not all circles of protection are created equal. The green circle is best against creatures, just because there are so many green creatures. The red one is equally effective against that color's high damage dealing uh, power. Even when you don't know your opponent's strengths, these circles are good insurance. If you can't stop large waves of creatures, or if you struggle to counter double-digit fireballs or disintegrates, incorporating green and red circles into your deck is a good idea. Circle of Protection Black is less useful, since black has fewer damage spells, while white and blue are the least likely to be necessary. However, if you're going to be facing a deck with 6 Karmas or half a dozen Serpents, 
A circle of protection in the corresponding color is a very wise investment. Circles of protection can prevent more than creatures and direct damage spells, however. They also prevent damage from any source of that color. So they are one of the few ways to defend against insidious spells like Wanderlust, Warp Artifact, Feedback, Cursed Land and such. One very overlooked use of Circles of Protection is protecting yourself from your own spells. Instead of casting Hurricane and doing 15 points of damage to both players, why not do 14 points of damage to your opponent, saving the last mana to fuel your Circle of Protection green, skip paying the Force of Nature or the Lord of the Pit, and absorb the damage in a Circle of Protection. There are a number of cards that damage the caster, almost all of which can be negated by Circles of Protection. One exception is Channel, which explicitly says that effects like Circles cannot prevent the required loss of life. While it may sound simple using Circles of Protection, well, it takes a good deal of skill. When you have several Circles of Protection out, you should be very careful about your mana management. Simply leaving untapped number of mana equal to the number of your opponent's attacking creatures is bound to get you clobbered unless you have other mana generating artifacts or spells in your hand, such as Sacrifice or Dark Ritual, setting aside just enough land to prevent damage from your opponent's creatures will leave you vulnerable to a Fireball or another spell. With extra mana in your hand, however, the one mana that to one creature ratio can be an effective ploy. Tapping all your exposed mana to prevent creature attacks may lure your opponent into attacking with the damage spell that your hidden mana can counter. Of course, your use of circles should be influenced by what you know of your opponent. If you're fighting an unknown deck, circles of protection can actually be a liability. Usually in games that are nasty enough to matter, your opponent will be playing three or fewer colors, so most of the circles of protection you draw will be useless. Each such draw represents a lost turn, which is a significant handicap. But if you do know the colors in an opponent's deck, then circles can be the key to victory. It can be useful to stock your deck with several circles of the same color. Multiple circles of protection are good for making sure you get that defense in play immediately. It's no help to have your only protection against red X spells sitting at the bottom of your deck, waiting for you to draw it on turn 31 when you die on turn 8. If you're playing someone who just uses one color, you can paralyze his or her play by incorporating four or five circles of that color into your deck, one of which you are likely to get into play in the second turn or so. Even if your opponent has two colors, two or three circles in each color are a wise investment. Look at it this way. If you put three circles of protection in your deck, the second and third circle will be useless cards, or 5% of your deck. This investment often ensures, though, that your opponent will be sitting with a deck in which 50% of his cards are useless. When your opponent has three colors, you probably want one of each color, with maybe a second for his or her strongest color. But if your opponent is playing five colors, you may not even want to bother because the circle is going to have such a limited usage. Often the game revolves around protecting your circles of protection. The best way to protect them is by studying how to defeat them. Here are a few suggestions. 1. Tranquility and Gloom Since Tranquility removes all enchantments from play, you can use it to get past a minefield of circles in one fell swoop. If you have any green cards in your deck, it's probably worth having Tranquility just to counter circles. However, the problem with this strategy is that Tranquility also wipes out your own circles. A similar ploy is Gloom which makes all circles of protection, including your own, cost 3 mana to use. 2. Disenchant This card is useful as a point uh, defense, taking out just that one circle that's holding back all 8 of your creatures. 3. Artifact creatures Juggernaut, Obscenius Golems and such are perfect for getting around circles because they do colorless damage. 4. Swarming If you have more creatures than your opponent has lands, then attack. Not everything will get through, but your opponent won't be able to stop everything either. A lot of little creatures that are hard to block work best here. Even if you don't have more creatures than your opponent has lands, you'll still do well. If you have 7 creatures, your opponent will have to choose between taking damage from those 
he or she can't block and not being able to use seven lands. A, ver uh, a variant on swarming is pestilence. Since you can pestilence several times during your turn, you can use it in combination with creature attacks to force your opponent to run out of mana. However, this only works well when your opponent is very low in life. 5. Land Destruction One playtester, Dave Petty, approached the circle problem by reasoning that if you have no mana to power the circles, then the circles are useless. Enough land destruction cards such as Sinkhole or Stone Rain will stop any deck relying on circles of protection for defense. 6. Land Tapping Strategies If you can force your opponent to tap his land, he won't be able to power his circles. For example, you could power sync one of your opponent's spells. This forces him to tap his land, rendering his circles useless. Of course, there is a counter to this strategy. Make sure you have at least one land in your hand and then cast your spell. If your opponent does use power sync, you can still play the one land at the end of your main phase to power your circle of protection. Another counter to this power sync strategy is to use sources of mana other than lands. Power Sync forces you to tap your land in order to counter the spell. However, Power Sync does not affect creatures or artifacts that provide mana, unless their mana has already been added to your mana pool. You might also consider using Power Leak. It costs 2 mana to prevent damage from this card, so if you play a Power Leak on each of his enchantments, your opponent will be forced to use his land to prevent the damage and he won't be able to power his circles. Alternatively, you can wait until your opponent has exactly enough mana to cover all your attacks and then twiddle one of, uh, one of his or her lands. If your opponent lets you twiddle her land, she has one less land than she needs to counter your attack. If however your opponent chooses to tap her land interrupting your twiddle and then you don't attack, she suffers a point of damage for the mana that remains unused in her mana pool. Twiddle actually works better than Icy Manipulator in this case, because Twiddle is a surprise maneuver, whereas your opponent always knows Icy Manipulator is out there. 7. Mana Barbs This card does 1 point of damage for each land that is tapped. So even if your opponent has a circle, tapping a land to power it just causes another point of damage. Of course it's still worth the 1 point of damage for Mana Barbs to protect against anything that is doing more than 1 point of damage. 8. Laces and Sleight of Mind Laces change the color of a card. With the right type of lace, you can change creatures or spells to a color for which your opponent has no circle of protection. Again, there is a counter strategy. Sleight of Mind, which allows your opponent to change the color of her circle of protection, making her circles far more versatile. For example, you might use Life Lace to change a red giant into a green giant getting it past your opponent's circle of protection red. But your sleight of mind carrying opponent can respond by changing her circle of protection red to circle of protection green. Of course you could also use a sleight of mind to your advantage, changing the color of your opponent's circle to one that she has no use at, at all or just for the moment. 9. Multiple colors. This final suggestion may seem obvious, but a 5 color deck is far less vulnerable to circles than a 3 color deck and a one-color deck is dead meat against a circle of protection. There are certainly other sly combinations out there that will get around circle of protections as well as strategies for protecting them. The basic approach though is to develop more prudent ways to manage your mana so you'll be able to defend yourself while still casting spells. If you strike the right balance, circles of protection can be an extremely valuable addition to your deck. Chris Page and that was the article and um, that was interesting interesting to read again against uh, about these COPs and also to think um, how we're looking differently at circle of protections but not really I mean in old school they still play a very significant role not as big as they used to I guess but they still play a big role I think um, for a lot of players the COP black has um, sees more sideboard play than the COP green and I think that is because of the hypnotic specters because if you can prevent the damage from a specter then you don't have to discard. Um, also COP blue is something that I see more often probably because of the side blasts and the very uh, aggro style blue deck so a COP can really give you that space that you may uh, need to kind of get into the game if you're playing more of a control brew style. Um, again very interesting uh, to read this 
If you have any articles that you'd like to recommend, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think in general of these podcast series. Um, if you like them, if they get uh, good views and likes, I will probably do some more of them right here on the channel. And if you want to support Timmy Talks, you can do so by leaving a like, subscribing, sharing this podcast on your socials. Um, and of course, we also have a Patreon page so you can support me and you can support Timmy Talks on Patreon. So there's an info card appearing right now. Talking about the Patre Patreon page, let's take a look at the end scroll. Let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ich kann das Finger zu Sumba kann